Okay, um, hi again. <laughs> okay, let's gather more people. I'm sorry for all this mess. It was never the case, but I don't know what's happening today. I have some loyal fans here, Bilal. <laughs> okay, hi, Rish is here already. Uh, again, a very brief introduction about me. My name is Zainab al -Aqabi. I'm from Iraq, based in the UAE. <laughs> and today I'll be interviewing Heinrich Papo for the Passion for Paralympics Relay. It's a new show on the Paralympics Instagram and where there will be weekly episodes. Hopefully this episode will work. <laughs> Let me put down the title before we get, we have Heinrich here. Paralympics relay yay <laughs> hopefully this episode will be okay let's spend this and then again i always <laughs> i always flip the camera when i can <laughs> anyway let's get started and let's invite heinrich on board where the struggle always happens <laughs> okay Deep breath. <laughs> okay. It's working. I think it's working. Let's just keep quiet. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I don't know. Is it working? I think so. Let's go. It's working. Okay. Hi. <laughs> okay, guys. It's working. I hope it stays like this. Yes. <laughs> Yay! Okay, let's... One hour later. <laughs> <laughs> let's keep the celebrations quiet <laughs> okay without further ado let's get started Thank okay you. you're good how are you i'm good i'm just like a bit like uh, anxious i'm just like counting the seconds with this issue of the internet and the vpn struggle okay. and i'm just like hoping things keep on going because i have a awesome. list of questions for you is it yes <laughs> don't make it tougher don't worry, you're not going to struggle. Uh, it should I be will. fine. <laughs> okay. Guys, I would love to introduce to you Heinrich. Of course, you know him better than knowing myself. Heinrich is an amazing former athlete. And now he's on his journey to mentor so many champions who have achieved already so many records. I myself is an FPT. I lost my leg when I was seven years old. And Heinrich taught me how to run after 17 or 18 years. He literally kicked my ass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now let's get started. Heinrich, you lost the, your, your leg at the age of nine years old, right? Yes, yeah. I want you to go back to that moment. What happened and why this happened? Let me think. <laughs> no, no, no. Yes. Um, to be honest, um, I really don't remember the time. I don't know why. I think because it was a tough time and I was young, but when I try to remember, I don't feel bad or negative. The only thing I remember was like after losing my leg, I lost my leg because of cancer. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I struggled with after losing my leg was not being able to run around, play soccer, uh, to see my friends. I was not, um, how do you say, I was not affected, like, I was affected by the amputation, but yes, I was not, uh, like, uh, I was not thinking about on the amputation, I was more uh, thinking about how is it possible to run again, play around, I was, yeah, that, that was always fine. I, I read goal. somewhere that it wasn't you who struggled, it's basically your parents. Oh, yes, oh, yes. To accept it. I think everyone who is in that chat on, and who has a disability and also you, I know your story. Um, it's always the parents and the friends and the people around you. Um, because I was young, I didn't realize what's going on. The only mm -hmm. problem I had was not being able to play soccer. Like that was my biggest problem. Like seeing my friends outside playing around, I really struggled with that, but... Uh, so you're passionate in sports since you were a kid. I don't know. My life without sports, uh, it's not it's worth not it. Fun. Like, no, no, no. I'm, 
I'm really for me sport in all kind of situations like after I lost my leg um every time I struggle with like how how can I say that every time I struggle with something like neg every time I when I'm negative I yes. always go out for run or do something um sport is for me the best medicine and uh you know but we when you were when you were at the age of nine years old, I don't think there was the knee that's suitable for running, right? How did you manage to find a way to run by then? You know what? I was uh, using the daily prosthetics mm -hmm. to run somehow. And everyone who is in that situation right now, they know what I'm talking about. Like somehow you, you struggle. You, you, you will just do it. Yeah, you just run and then you're carrying your leg behind you. you you're hopping. You're using your crutches. Um, like in the beginning, everyone was was uh, taking me in their soccer team for being the goalkeeper because the goalkeeper, no one wants to be the goalkeeper. The yeah. goalkeeper is the one who is not cool. And I had to be the goalkeeper in the beginning, the beginning of my amputation. Uh, like yeah. were, you, were you somehow abused when you were a child because you're an amputee? Have you gone through that stage or never? You know, like kids... They the most honest people, and yeah. on one side it was tough to go through this uh, journey, but on the other side, uh, the things that I learned to go through this journey with kids and being an amputee made the person I am uh, out of me, like made me the person I am right now, and that was something like every time I work with amputees, and you remember when you started mm -hmm. running, I was yeah. yelling at you. <laughs> Always. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just because, do it. <laughs> yeah, because I saw, and, and that's something like I always uh, realize when I'm doing the running clinic and when I uh, work with amputees, every time it's it's here. It's not it's it's not the amputation. Every time we do something together, and I remember like you, you were telling me, I'm not. I can't. I'm, I can't. Yeah. I can't, I can't. And then you did two steps, and you realize, okay, I can run. I can't remember your face. Yes, <laughs> Whenever I struggled to run, actually, I went through like two running clinics. And the first time I couldn't make it. And the second time Heinrich was like always on my back, like, just do it. Just do it. I'm like, I can't. I'm going to fall. It's like, I'm going to slap you on your head. Just do yeah. it. <laughs> we, we, we fought a lot. Just do we it for God's sake. Yeah, we fight a lot during the running clinic. But when you were a kid, how did you hear about the Paralympics? Was it that famous? Or were you just in the school, uh, just running with the kids, and then you, you discovered you're talented, that you can use this passion somewhere else? You know what? Um, I was like, after, I remember that I got to know about the Paralympics in the hospital, you know, when I had to make the decision to... Wow, to, that's um, ...putee my leg, there was yeah. one Paralympic athlete. And this is something that, like, this is the biggest achievement the Paralympic movement have. Like, mm -hmm. The person who was sitting next to me were, was explaining me the whole process of oh. being an amputee, what's going on in the future, what's possible, what's not possible. It's like, we are not only athletes. We, we are showing the world what's possible. And uh, the reason why I'm happy and the reason why I love my life was just because of a Paralympics athlete. And that's the reason why I'm why I love to become a Paralympic athlete as well. And then I was nine years old. Uh, he was explaining me everything. And after that, my Paralympics was only going outside in the school, doing school sports, running around, playing around with my friends. And but when was that moment when changed everything? Like you figured out like, oh, this is real and I can be there. I have the passion for it. I'm talented. Like I can't really see myself there. Uh. To there honest, has to be this moment there was when no, things changed. I, I don't know where the moment was. I was 17 years old when I tried for the first time to compete in, 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 uh, on the level of para-athletes. Yeah. Um, I was in, that was an invitation uh, competition. Uh, I went to that competition and I remember I was running on my daily prosthetic. Like mm -hmm. I said, I was not running. I was just jumping and hopping behind <laughs> the guys who have this blade. Yeah, just doing uh, things to make it work. <laughs> yes, but I finished the 100 meter with the 10th fastest time in the world by then, like being 17 years old. And then everyone realized, okay, this guy is talented. 
he got something. And that's when I started. It was in the year 2000. I went to buy a Leverkusen and uh, yeah, then I got my first running prosthetic. But to be honest, I was fast. I was two seconds faster with my daily prosthetic than with my running prosthetic. Wow, that's that's a big number. Seconds yeah. matter. Yeah, you know, the problem is like everyone think that when you have a blade, you can run fast, but that's not true. It's like when you when you get the car from Lewis Hamilton, you won't become the Formula One champion. You have it's to. It's you. Yeah, it's, it's you, you. Who's yeah. using it. Yeah, and that's that's what I had to realize the first four years of being a uh, para athlete uh, doing the competition. I struggled a lot. Through my search, I can see that you've been through so many competitions, like in so many countries, uh, so many diversities. You met so many people, so many athletes here on the Paralympics account. What are your special moments? There has to be many, but like if now, like when I said special moments, what came on your mind? Okay, when I see you and you talking, you asking me for a special moment, like we had a special moment together. Um, the the moment I had with Mohammed, yes, that was something. But that's your journey as a mentor now. I want special moments through through your journey as an athlete. Holy who shit. won the gold medals? Who who was like just running like hell and seeing nothing, just like oh the gold medal, I want this and that. Who traveled like hell? Who was on constant diet, <laughs> with certain weight and always struggling? <laughs> What, were, uh, where, what was special about those moments? Um, you know, like, I think there's no special moment. Like, my whole career was really special. Uh, when I started to become an athlete and then, and like, achieving these medals, it was nice. But at the end, I don't know how I did it. Like, and if you ask my coach, he don't know that as well. <laughs> <laughs> so things just happen no, sometimes. I, no, I was like, every time I, do, I did training and every time I was competing, I did it with lots of passion. I, I really, I, I was, I, I loved to be on the track. I loved to do, uh, like, the training. I loved to, to, like, I loved to play around with the prosthetic, you know? Like, that's the reason why I was into this, uh, uh, developing process of the, the sports prosthetic uh, during my career. I was struggling a lot with my coach. How did you was, develop things with uh, your prosthesis to I achieve had, more? I was happy that um, uh, I had the chance to work together with Otto Bock, uh, and like everything I needed during training, I I was telling the engineers from Otto Bock what I need, and they helped me, and we were, it was a try and error. Uh, Everything that we needed for running, everything my my coach was involved in it, uh, and yeah, we just we just played around, and what that was like the result of that is incredible, and you know the result. Everyone is able to to of run. Around. Should we say hello to some some of the uh, users? You may I, you may recognize many names. Uh, I, some people are some people are asking recently. about your nutritional supplements, like. Were you on a specific diet? What was your diet when you were an athlete? You see <laughs> <Not this? easy. laughs> No, I'm just like, um, every time when I had to become, uh, like, when I had to be fit, I was, like, just looking on my, my, nutri my, my diet. That's it. But, uh, no, I was just, like, I was just enjoying. Really? Uh, when you were an athlete, you weren't under specific uh, restrictions? Uh, I was, but... <laughs> Okay, I'm happy that my coach is not here and no one is here who knows me. Come Tell on. me, there is no much people watching. <laughs> only, only like 60 people would know the secret and more, spread more. To be honest, I was really like... Um, in the winter, I was not fit at all. And uh, all the Paralympic athletes who knows me, they know that I was unfit in the winter. But my coach was telling me always, okay, this is uh, like for the summer. Now you're training with a little bit more body weight, uh, and it makes it will make you stronger. But when you come to, when it comes to this to this uh, competition, it was really you important. Have to you have yeah. to lose weight. <laughs> I was one of that athletes who did like, uh, okay, now I have to do it, and then I was really on a diet. But uh, yeah. 
No, I was not taking nutritional supplements. No, <laughs> that bodybuilders take up. No, 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 no. That's a one of the. Uh, uh. No, I, I was not a bodybuilder. I was like, uh, yeah, I was just enjoying training, and uh, you know, uh, my yeah. nutritional supplements was my mom. <laughs> really? Oh, because she fed you very well. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. She was always keep feeding me. And... Okay, back to your journey. <laughs> Tell me when you started. I'm sure you've tried so many sports beco- before figuring out that you want to go with the long jump or the 100 meter run. What did you try and how did you reach the conclusion that this is the sport where I fit the most and I can achieve the maximum? Uh, sorry, sorry. Can, can, we, can we go? See, Arts athlete. he's one of the Paralympic athletes. He's coming from Beirut. And he's yes, saying, I know him. Yeah. Unfit in the winter. Because the then... jacket covered the one pack. Yeah. <laughs> See? See? And then like get fit in the summer. See, nice that's all right. That that's that was me. <laughs> Actually, it works for girls as well. Just generally saying, <laughs> we never bother about diet in winter. <laughs> Everything is undercover. Yeah. Um, can you go? Can you say the question again? Like, what kind of okay. sports I tried? Uh, tried out. And... Yes, I would like to know. I'm sure you've tried so many sports before figuring out that you fit the best for the hundred meter run and the long jump. Like, what did you try first? And how did you realize that I have to choose these sports because I can achieve the best? That's a good question. Uh, I'm sure know, so many athletes go through this journey to choose and, finally their journey. Okay, I, I, I tell you something. I tried high jump. Then I realized I'm too fat for high jump. That's good. You figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> then I, I thought like, okay, I'm a big guy. By that time, when I tried the stuff, like when I tried the, the sports, I tried short put. Then I hurt my shoulder. I, I mm-hmm. find out that I'm not strong enough for short put. Uh, then I tried, what else? Sitting volleyball. After uh-huh. the first training, my Your ass was, <laughs> my ass was hurting. Your yeah. And then I said, no, 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 I'm not doing it again. And then I tried swimming. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was horrible. Anyway. At the end, uh, I thought like, okay, what's the easiest thing to do? And then uh, I tried the hundred meters straight. Everyone can run straight, and that was <laughs> that was when I find out that the hundred meters fine for me. Uh, even I struggled. Even I struggled with the two hundred when I had to run the curve. Uh, it's not, longer. Yeah, it's longer. <laughs> and. When I become older, like in the beginning of my career, I was really obsessed about the 100 meter mm-hmm. because I really liked the, the, the how do you say that? Uh, I really liked the um, adrenaline kick be- before the start, like on your mark, set, and then mm-hmm. you know. Okay, That's not, too much adrenaline, yeah. If you're not reacting, you can go home. But when I become older, I had like, I was not into that, like on your mark, set, uh, go. I was more obsessed about long jump. Like there, you have six attempt. You can, mm-hmm. you can come into the competition. Like you can uh, do like step by step, and then uh, you really more like, chances. Now you can enjoy the competition, and then uh, like you can talk to your competitors. You can really like have a chat in between of the competition. Exactly. Yeah. This is Chill what I really loved at the end of my. And this shows like when you watch on my career, 2012, I won the 100 meter gold. And then 2016, I was like 100. Long jump. Let's do it. Long jump, yeah, let's do it. There is one question here from Foxy in the box. In the 100 meter, how do you deal with the pressure? Holy. uh, I think you have to love it. Uh, I I don't know if you can deal somehow with it. You can train for it, and then you have to love it. Like I said before, you have to love the adrenaline. You have to love the, the situation. And I was really like, I think I was a hundred meter junkie, you know? Like it's I all was, into it. Yeah, I was just like, I was, I couldn't <laughs> wait till the start, uh, I would say like on your marks. That's amazing. That's huge I, passion. I was never like feeling a pressure. I was just like into like, let this little kid run. You know what I mean? Like I was, uh, the, my whole it. career, I was always the little kid. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm still a little little kid. <laughs> there was one question before going live, yeah. and in which I already had the same question in mind. Have you ever felt like a loser? 
or you're an epic failure, for example, you did a competition and you didn't achieve what you were looking for or what you thought you will get. Often. Yeah, Often. like how and did I, you deal with that feeling of failure? I, I never had the chance to deal with that because my, my I had a coach, he was really like uh, in an old age, he was really down to earth and every time... Um, every time something happened in the competition, he was like, uh, he never gave me the chance uh, to to deal with that. Like he said, like, okay, we now we need to train, we need to focus on the next competition. He was just like, he took the whole pressure and uh, everything away from me. Every time something happened, he said, like, oh, we need to talk about that. That for sure, we need to mm -hmm. find out what what was wrong, and next time we will do it better. And th that's that's it. It's, How did you know that your coach is the right coach? Um, in the beginning, he was not the right coach. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, he was one of my best friends. He was listening to me and he never gave a pay attention to my disability. And that that showed me that he's the right person to to push the limits with me together. You know, like he, he never cared about my amputation. You know what yeah. he did in the beginning of my career? He put me into the into a group into a training group with girls. Uh -huh. <laughs> Why did you do my, that? <laughs> all my friends asked me to come to see me uh, training and and to see me running, and I said like, no, no, guys, fine, I'm fine. It's not allowed to come and to see training. We're professional athletes. <laughs> That's but a lie. <laughs> that, that that was a lie because I was losing against the girls. And uh, but why? Just like to motivate me, just to take the to pressure. To motivate away. you? Yeah, you have to work like, out with girls? He gave or me I bigger, thought he was. <laughs> no, he gave me a bigger problem than my amputation, losing against girls. Well. <laughs> you know We're not that tough, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, There's someone asking about the swimming experience. You said that it was horrible. Can you describe what you went through during the regards, uh, during that? Like, why was it bad? Swimming. swimming experience, yeah. Uh, just, I, I'm not talented to swim. I just realized that uh, water is not 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 uh, the element I love. You know, like I, I jump into the water. I'm I'm fine with swimming. I can mm -hmm. swim, but it's not you. It's not me. And yeah. on the other side, the struggle, like. I, I couldn't feel the struggle with my disability. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I had no prosthetic on. I had no, like, problems with my amputation. Like, I, 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 I didn't have to to deal with my amputation. Just the water, and I. I don't know why, water. but I usually prefer the water. I I think because my amputation is a bit shorter than yours. You are yeah. through the knee. I am like totally above the knee, as mm -hmm. you know. So whenever I'm in the water, I actually feel free. But when I was running, I was always thinking of the sweat that's in my socket. I'm like, just get out. Just get, mm. let me get rid of you. <laughs> and that, that's the opposite of what I had. Like, I, I, I was not free in the water. I was just like, I, I felt something is wrong. Like, I think I'm, I'm made for running. And, uh, and this is something like everyone it's has to It's good to, to know what you're made for. Uh, uh. It's, a, it's a power. So Laura here is asking you, what motivated you most during your career as an athlete? What kept you going? <sighs> to push my limit, uh, like, I was always looking for my own limits. You know, the reason why I, I the most important thing I realized during my career and yeah. like the most thing I hated during my career was the pe even before my career, after my amputation, and I think that's the reason why I started doing sport and running. I hated the people who told me you can't do this, you can't do that. And every time when I like uh, um, when I achieved something during my my uh, career, and I never and I didn't have the feeling that this was the limit, I pushed myself to to push to more to more and to do more. Even, even, to be honest, like, that's the reason why um, I'm happy with my career. And uh, I was always looking for, for my own limits uh, and the limits of my disability. But I think I never find, I never find them. I had to stop my career because of my age. <laughs> I was too old. I was just about to ask you, like, what made you stop? 
like your Why? passion is incredible like it pushed you throughout so many limits and you just re literally broke what people think you can't so the only reason is your age and that's it and the young young athletes like leon and vinicius uh I know Vinicius, Vinicius Rodriguez, who took my world record in the 100 meter. You must be he, proud. Uh, yeah, he started running on my spare prosthetic. Uh, and that, this story with Vinicius is incredible. He just dropped me a Facebook message. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, like, I think three or six months later, I was, I don't know, I think six months later, I was in Brazil. And then uh, he attended the running clinic and then he started on my spare parts and now he's the world record holder. And I was feeling the pressure from him and also from Leon, the long jumper, who took my world record in the long jump. You see, these two kids are friends from me and they like, I had the chance to help them. And uh, I was, I knew if the old man is not going to stop, they will make me stop and uh, and that's during, it yeah during my career i was always the one who who uh, like who decided by himself what to do on and what not to do and that that was the reason why i stopped for people who don't know heinrich holds a running clinic across the world so throughout the running clinic people are requested to participate amputees and heinrich teach them how to run and during the running clinic heinrich discovered so many talents and we can say like a number of them now, they are a world champion. And it's incredible. I was one of your young students. <laughs> I never made it to become an athlete, <laughs> but I'm an athlete for my own. But I can tell like this person, honestly, not because he's here in this chat, but he's, he has incredible skills, how to teach people, how to motivate them and how to keep them going. I have so many videos that I can share with you later on. He would just literally keep on jumping here and there to show you that Whatever excuse you will bring for me in this running clinic is bullshit. <laughs> Always. <laughs> and see, I'm doing the running clinic since 10 years now. Like we, wow. here we have the 10 years of anniversary of the running clinic. And it's amazing. And I had like lots of people through like throughout the world. And so what taught you? What taught you the running clinic? What do you it's mean? It's not only like it's not only you who mentor people like for each and every running clinic, like you come with an outcome, at least for yourself. So what an added value was it, the running clinic? Like, the, you mean to, 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 to make the whole running clinic or the movement? Or? Yeah, what, what, like what makes it so unique for you to keep on going with the running clinics? You know, there was a situation after I won my gold medal in London 2012. I went back home and I thought, I thought I'm a hero, like I'm the king of the world, and I'm. Um, I was I. I started to become different, and then we had a Sunday morning breakfast with the family, and my dad looked in my face and he said to me, "You know what? Bring your medal in your room, and then come back on the uh, to the breakfast, sit down, uh -huh. and just enjoy the time with the family." And he said to me, "If you forget where you're coming from." You will lose the biggest fan and he was uh -huh. one of my biggest fan and this situation showed me that this is very powerful. being an like paralympic athlete is not only about winning the medal it's like it's more than this like i'm i'm happy about the medals i'm happy about the the things i achieved but this has only something to do with me like it's my own ego but i have to give back i have to give back and I was like, like I said before, I'm 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 a happy person. I I in, I'm enjoying my life, and the reason for that is because I got the help from other people. I got the help, and we have the responsibility for other people, and that's the reason why I really love the running clinic, and that's the reason why I really love to help. And I, to be honest, I, I have a dream. I have a dream of that we are all coming together and supporting each other. Exactly. Uh, like the, the girl. Olympics is a yeah it's a family and we all belonging to the family you see like Zainab you now here hosting this and next week uh, we will have another I will host the the show with another athlete and this is something like I want to invite everyone to come because we need to give us respect we need we're sitting in the same boat everyone and it's like, true yeah and the life is so easy when you help each other and this is this is actually my you grow life. more when you help each other you grow more and you feel more satisfied happier you have that inner peace that it, it's just irreplaceable 
See, I tell you something. I started the running clinic in the year 2010. Mm -hmm. Before 2010, I never won a gold medal. 2011, the first year after, like, after the, I started the running clinic. I wow, was, so it I gave me a hell clinic. of motivation. I think without the running clinic, I wouldn't be the, uh, like, I couldn't achieve the, the, the medals I had. Like, without the running clinic, I think I would push myself to that. Ooh. Share with me like uh, a person who you didn't expect uh, will be able to run and she's in the they chat. It. She's in that. She's here. No, no, my son. <laughs> no, 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 no. Julia, you see Julia Porter. Wait, let me find her. Julia, Julia. Julia, we're looking for you. Just say hi again. No, she said she said hi. It's just like this. <laughs> um, <she laughs> What's her story? Um, she's a bilateral amputee. Yeah, hi, see? Wow. Here you go. Bilateral amputee. Bilateral, wow. double above okay, me. Okay, that's really tough. Above me. Yes, and she was like, I remember doing the running clinics. Everyone was able to run except Yulia. Uh -huh. But then mm -hmm. I put Yulia in between of two a goal, uh, like a small soccer goals. And then she was standing there. It was on a tennis court. And everyone who see her, they, you can go on her Instagram profile and see what she went through and then I think was it yesterday or today I don't know I think yesterday uh, she wrote to me um, that she ran over 5k uh, in one hour she wow. started jogging out that, that was really really cool I remember like she was really struggling and everyone she was struggling by herself like I gave her the time to to do the exercise yes. and everyone was telling me like no it's not possible she's bilateral she won't run I said like listen guys she will run have a look just give her one more hour and then she started running and then I remember the situation like everyone was shocked wow. and she that's amazing shocked. honestly like I can't just visualize it by myself it's uh, not easy at all yeah and she was shocked she was just like, she started running and then she realized that she's running. She stopped and then she fell down. <laughs> oh, exactly. I, I think this is just like by default because yeah, you can't yeah. get it. Like this is really happening. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. It must have been very emotional moment for you, Julia. Yeah. And like, it, was, it should and like, be. It was, it is only one of that story. The story with you, the story with Mohammed. The little of course. Boy. Yeah, he was just like, oh. And when I see his pictures, uh, Yulia say, oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. When I see his picture. And then in Japan, I had lots of stories. In the USA, I was working with the military guys. I think but you I could was... write a book, honestly, about the running clinic to share so many stories. It would just emp empower so many people and make them inspired just to break their limits. Yeah. Yeah. And that, I don't know if, like, I would love to do a book. I don't, but uh, we'll see. Maybe. In the we'll future. see. But uh, now I want to ask you about about what the dancing show <laughs> no come on i was <laughs> come on <laughs> i want to know your hidden talents <laughs> can i hear craig friends keep up the great work the running things are sensational thank you craig yes there are so many comments about it the paralympics movement is incredible of course yeah and it changed so many uh, mindsets in the societies especially i can tell you here in the middle east it's not easy for athletes like until now, so many countries are not providing the best support for their athletes. Uh, but their passion is what driving them to reach the Paralympics and to get into the competitions. Mm. Yeah, and that's something like I wanna, I wanna, I don't know, I wanna bring them all together. Like, and sure. I think the Paralympics, the IPC, uh, they can be our uh, our house, you know, where we can meet each other. Yeah. definitely and definitely. i know like everyone is invited everyone is is like the paralympics the ipc uh if you come and knock on the door you will be more than welcome you will once I, once i'm in germany i will knock on the door you can do it I promise <laughs> you can ask craig everyone they will open uh, the door you're always welcome everyone is welcome that's amazing honestly that's that's a great support and just a motivation by itself to choose your sport and go for it uh, adolfo marza <laughs> he was also doing the running clinic with me in argentina he's a crazy athlete he's so how many people do you know across the world because of the running clinic oh no i don't know a lot you can't count them uh, um, like, see, the, 
10, 10 running, uh, like 10 years of running clinic and then being an athlete. Um, what makes a good mentor? What makes a good mentor? Yes. So now you're teaching, so I'm sure you, you developed better. your skills because you became better by time. So what makes you good or what makes a good mentor? Um, first of all, you have to be, uh, to give back, you know, if you, mm -hmm. if you give something, you have to be, uh, you, you have to share it with other ones, other ones. And then second is like, uh, if you think that everything you do is the right way, then you will struggle to become a good mentor. You have That's to be true. open for new things. Um, even after my career, like looking back on my career, mm -hmm. I don't think I did everything right. I'm, 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 I'm thankful for my career, but if I would become a Paralympic athlete right now, I would do everything different. Because you have always to reflect yourself, and this is of course and to this prove. Is so important. Yeah. yeah, I will go back to my question. I'm not skipping this part. You know this very well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on, <laughs> come on. We want to see the other side of Hunters, not only the athlete. So you were participating in that dancing show. Yes. What it taught you? Come on, we love to dance. It's it something was... so much fun. And you, as an amputee, it, it gives me the motivation to learn and like, hey, we can do more moves. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. See how many fans you have? No, yeah, we have. I'm not, I'm, I'm not changing the topic. Um, <laughs> you know, like I was attending the German version of Dancing with the Stars. Mm -hmm. And then um, the reason why I said yes to that show was they asked me to attend the show and I said like for the first time I said like oh no thank you second time they asked me again and then I said like okay oh no no thank you I'm, I'm busy with being an athlete and then third time when they asked me I realized okay I have to do it because I tell I'm telling everyone everything is possible yeah and now they're asking me and I'm what made you refuse like just because you didn't see yourself in a dancing show or it's just uh, you thought of challenge, the challenges that you may face with your prosthesis. What I made a, you? I was afraid of, of this challenge. I was afraid of the reaction of the people. And mm -hmm. to be honest, the reaction in the beginning was really bad, really bad. In the first show, I was showing my prosthetic. And yeah. I had lots of shit storm. And then I went to the TV station and said, listen, guys. But why? What was the reaction? It was just like they didn't like to see my prosthetic. They said, like, it's not aesthetic. They don't want to see the metal thing. Oh, it's so like they that. wanted you to hide your disability. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, no, like, I hate I think, to use this word. Yeah. I think, like, everyone is, you know, like, like every amputee is trying to do in the beginning of his amputation or every person with a disability is trying to do, hiding yeah. yourself. And then I said, like, no, guys, I went through lots of uh, situation my whole life. I'm not hiding my prosthetic. And then... I put myself into that show and then I was, yeah. How many legs did you use throughout the show? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, not... Like, I know you've used many, like knees, foot, yeah, well, to I'm be able to enough. catch up with the techniques. I'm lucky enough that I'm my own orthopedic technician. Like, I'm an orthopedic technician. I can do my own legs and that's the reason why I was able to, to try out different legs for different dances, like, for samba and salsa, I had to change my legs for slow folks and um, contemporary. Someone asked, what was your favorite style? I had this question even before starting the live. See, really? like people were so excited to know what your dancing journey. <laughs> um, what was uh, your favorite style? Contemporary. Okay, can you show us some moves or no? <laughs> no, 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 no. Not you even tiny on, ones, just like this. You can go on Google and then just type in Heinrich Popper. We want to have live dance show. It's not well, like it's a not YouTube. I'm holding my phone. It's not possible. <laughs> we can hold your phone for you. Yeah, no, no, no. Next time, next time. <laughs> next time. Yeah. We can okay, do and... a dance a challenge. If you start with one <laughs> dance move, I will do the second one and then we'll do a challenge. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> they can YouTube everything. <laughs> okay, what made you like leave the show by then? And what did you learn? Like, what changed in you after the the show? Everything, like a lot. I changed a lot. Like my my, how can I say that? My self confidence changed. Okay. 
uh, I thought like after winning the gold medal and achieving everything during my uh, running like running career mm -hmm. I, I went through everything but putting myself into that dancing situation um, I realized that I missed something after my amputation and that was the movement based on my emotions oh. every time you know every time as an amputee you do a step you you always make sure that the step step is safe and you you're not doing a movement based on your emotions like you always make sure that you're safe and That's true. In, in dancing you can't do this yeah like the music is playing and you have to you have to you just have follow to you have to <laughs> feel the music and you just have to move and then I realized during the the the, the show that um, moving um, is some and and like enjoying the movement has nothing to do with with legs or arms. Mm -hmm. It's just it's, it's just again, different. Yeah. It's again the passion. It's again it was it was similar to running running but different running was like based on training and i was really working and i think running it. is just like an intense sport you have to put your full focus but with dancing it's just more like emotions and just let it, let it go it's a combination of mm -hmm. things yeah. so there is a question i have many accomplishments i won the longest jump and the fastest I have more questions on the side. Yeah. So there was one question who said, um, how many dreams were impossible for you because of your disability? But then by time you made it possible. What do you mean? Like how many dreams? Yeah, like you, maybe there were some dreams or goals that you wanted to achieve, but it was challenging because of your disability. And by time when your mindset developed you had a stronger vision things became better and you managed to achieve these goals yeah like my whole career i, I think my whole career i was not expecting to win the gold medal one day i was mm -hmm. not expecting to become a good mentor i was just like i think in the beginning of my career i was really selfish like um, i was not even see myself just like helping one person or and then I realized, okay, this is some, this is different. I, I, I need to, I need to uh, help people, and I need to 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 do this. And um, when I like when I started to 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 become like an athlete and training and everything, um, I never expected to 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 run so fast. I never expected to become the world record holder if, and 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 i think if i wouldn't have my family my friends uh, the support i have from autobock from the ipc yeah um from my coach and um, i wouldn't achieve that it's not like it's i have the medals but i i didn't it's a teamwork them, so. at the end of the day it's a t yeah it's team. yeah it's a teamwork it's like you're a you're the representative you are yeah. the person who's doing the whole like the main thing but at the end of the day, it's a network. So each person has the, its own part to deal with. And if they exceed it, you exceed it and vice versa. See? You said yeah. that. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, Remember your words next time on the running clinic. Uh, are the legs waiting for you, but you know what's happening there. <laughs> no, honestly, I, I'm I like, once I'm able to practice or my sports back or just to be back properly in the gym, for those who don't know, I have just like a um, nerve injury that I have to deal with it for a while. Uh, but you have no idea how I can't wait to run again. Um, I'm so lucky that I managed to run before I figure out what was wrong to not have my mind affected by the injury. Uh, and I can't forget that moment. It feels like I won a gold medal because... Uh, every time I watched the video when I was running, it seemed like Julia, like when she realized she felt right away. And for me, like, I tried to watch that video frequently just to remember that I managed to run. So I actually broke the fear and I keep on listening to your voice in the background of my head. So it's actually the mentor, the coach, and the techniques. And the coin. <laughs> and the coin. <laughs> I still have the paper holding the coin. Yeah. Hold the coin, yeah. 
So there is one more question here. Now we are in the quarantine. People are wondering, what are you doing in the quarantine? Well, stuck at home. Um, I was doing the workouts for for uh, for Autobahn Passion for Paralympics every evening. Uh, we did the workouts, uh, and um, and then I'm working home office. Um, I really try to connect the people together. I'm really like I said before. I really have the wish that we coming together and. Uh, um, and I know, like, I'm working for Autobock, and I know that um, we as users, um, they really want to support us. And uh, I try to create this movement. And uh, this is what I'm working on right now. I have the time right now. It's incredible. Oh, also, I'm, I'm so gonna... excited for it. Yeah, me too. And everyone mm -hmm. who wants to be in this movement, come and join us. Everyone is invited. It's amazing. Um, and the Power also... Athletics here is asking you. Do you miss competing? If I miss competing, no way. Uh -uh. No, really? <laughs> Not even a little bit? Uh, or you're done. That's it. I think I'm done. I don't... I'm not, okay, I, no, I'm it's missed, not bad, actually. No, no, no. Like, I, you know I, it. I, I'm I miss to see the competition. And uh, like the last uh, Para World Championships in Dubai, when I... Saw all the athletes that I'm supporting. I was more nervous than I, than I was in my career. Um, I miss to see the competition, but I don't miss to be in the competition. And <laughs> too uh, much pressure. Enough yeah, of it. Too much. No, I'm not. I'm not. No, I'm done with the pressure. <laughs> how do you visualize? How do you visualize the future for technology in terms of prosthetic legs that could help uh, athletes or people with their daily life since See, you've been always involved with technologies for the running knee and so on you must have some kind of vision you know like the vision i have is like to 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 be able to use the technology and i know there is lots of and i don't know if it's too honest but uh, everyone who knows me uh, they know that i'm honest um Lots of amputees always pay attention on the technology, uh, but then they are not making themselves ready to use the technology. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Uh, yeah. And I just want to, I want to bring the technology with the human being closer together because like the technology right now we have with the prosthetics is, is further than the people who are using the technology. You know what I mean? Like That's a very good explanation. That's right, you know. The, and uh, it's, for me, it annoys me a lot when people think that if you're using a very, very, very advanced prosthesis, that means you're going to be able to fly. But that's not really the case. And some of them are fitted with the best, most advanced prosthetic legs, but they don't really use the features. Yeah. And they would just like spend money and things for it just because they want it rather than to use it and invest it properly. And that's my biggest dream and my biggest goal to bring like the industry like Autobock together with the users and then like the users are able to use the technology. And then when we are able to use the technology properly, then yeah. we can expect more technology. But right now, just that's like true. saying technology, technology, technology. No, I can give you like the car from Lewis Hamilton. Try to be, become the world champion in Formula One. You won't. It seems that you like this car a lot. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's like always, <laughs> because I, you I, always I, use this example. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that, that example shows all, always like what's going on. And That's every true. time I see the people who are telling you, oh, you have the best prosthetic, I always tell them, okay, fine, you can have mine. Give me yours and I will still beat you. You know what I mean? True. Like, yeah, true. Oh, I personally it? know a few people, like I know them by person. They have the most advanced legs, but they never use the features. And it annoys me. It's like, come on, just yeah. move your ass. You've got yeah. this leg, buddy. Just yeah. do it. Yeah. And yeah. I know like there are lots of talents even for Paralympics. Like we have lots of young kids uh, who are uh, who are able to run, who are able to do sports, but they don't have the people behind them i don't know if i can say that who kick their ass yeah that's right that's the right sentence <laughs> is it the right sentence okay it sorry is. for that but um, i used it already <laughs> <laughs> i was lucky enough that my dad was really kicking my ass mm -hmm. um and uh, 
being an amputee or being a disabled person, you often have the right to have excuses. And I hate it. I really hate it. Like, I yeah. really hate people who are using their disability as an excuse. No way. Yeah, unfortunately, there are many. It's not working with me. And you know what I... <laughs> I know that. <laughs> so before our one hour session ends, I want you to, to deliver two main messages. One, for people with physical impairment, I just don't want to keep it super dedicated for amputees, generally, physical yeah. impairments. And the second message is uh, to the athletes who are competing, what, what to keep on, how to keep on going and, or what is their message to the world from your journey. I want these two messages before we wrap this show and you tell me then who's your next guest. Two messages. Yes. Physical impairment and athletes. Where's the difference? Physical impairment like myself. I'm not an athlete. I'm not competing in IPC, for example, or Paralympics. You're saying that. You're, saying that. you're not. Yeah, athlete. I'm just too old for it. No, 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 no. I mean, like, <laughs> why are you saying you're not an athlete? I'm an athlete for my daily life, mm -hmm. but not a com uh, someone who's competing. No, but there's no difference. Yeah, I might for me, there is no day. difference. <laughs> okay, is, then, is, then you This both. is the most important That's message. True. This is That's the true. most important message. Believe in your own goals. Like, don't, don't think like, okay, yeah, remember. Don't think like you're not an athlete or he's an athlete. Like, if you think you can do it, you can do it. That's true. Push yourself, like, look for your own limits and, like, and then you will be shocked what you can achieve, achieve in your daily life, being an athlete, like, don't hold yourself back. Don't let That's people right. telling you what you are able to do, what you're not uh, able to do. I hate this because no one knows. Even I don't know. We have the same disability. You have a shorter thumb, but I know like uh, there are some some uh, athletes in that uh, in that um, live uh, chat. Uh, like I I don't know the limits of an um, above knee amputee. I thought I when I ran the world record, I thought that's the limit. And then Vinicius came and he pushed the limit. Like every person with a disability or not a disability like mm -hmm. everyone have to look for his own possibilities and that's true and this is some keep on going and enjoy what you do enjoy what you do if your coach is telling you for athletes like who are here if your coach is telling you to do this or that and you don't like it and you don't have the passion for it don't, don't do, it. do it don't do yeah. it it's not necessary you're First not going all, anywhere with it you need the passion and then uh, you can push yourself. Thank you so much for this powerful message. Um, you. you know that I'm always influenced with what you say and what you do. Like I personally see you a great role model for me who always motivates me and just like make me like, come on, you can do it and make me break my limits. Um, it was an honor to interview you here. Um, and okay. it was an honor to be here on the Paralympics Instagram accounts. Um, I wish you with all the best with the next session. So Heinrich will be handing over the mic to someone else. Can you tell yeah. us who's our next guest? Uh, next week, I will interview Samantha Kinghorn. Mm -hmm. She is from, uh, she's a Paralympic athlete from Great Britain. Wow. And uh, just go on her Instagram, see who she is. And then I don't want to say too much. She is a nice athlete. She is a great role model. I can't wait to interview her because, like, she, I don't know. Like, I, I, I never met her in person, mm -hmm. uh, and but I heard a lot from her, and that's something like I will be like I'm. I'm excited to interview her to, wow. next week. I'll definitely be tuned by then. So it's going to be also Sunday at 8 p.m. CET. Yeah. 8 p.m., guys. 8 <laughs> no technical yeah. issues this time. No, <laughs> but not we will me. connect with the Great Britain. We don't need VPN. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank, thank you so much, Heinrich. And thank Can you I... all for attending. Stop, I really don't appreciate stop, it. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop, don't stop wait, the wait, music. Wait, wait, wait. Don't stop the music. Yeah. No, yeah, no, no, no. no. <laughs>
It's like Zainab, thank you very much. Like you, you just wanna uh, stop the the live uh, because it will be over in one hour. Like it, Instagram will keep. We have you. two more minutes. We have two yes. more minutes. See how many people attend just because of you. You are a great role model, and I know, I know. See, see you. your smile during the whole live chat. Like it's all about smiling. It's all about enjoying life. It's not about having a disability. It's not about having one leg or two legs. It's all about respecting each other. It's all about sure. love, and it's all about supporting each other. And I know what you're doing for us. I know what you're doing for the movement. And let's let's come closer together. Um, and uh, we will we will. The future is 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 nice. And I know the future. It's always bright. bright. Yeah, always. And this is something like I want to thank you for. Uh, making uh, the show, making the start. I know it's always not easy. We have technical <laughs> issues. No, actually, thank you so much for considering me for it. And you know, you have a special place in my heart, and I'll always be annoying you all the time. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, Paralympics. Uh, thank, thank you, IPC, Autobook, Paralympics, Autobook, everyone. Thank you. Stay tuned for next week's session. Bye. 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 Take Bye. care. Thank you all attending. See you everyone next week with Heinrich and stay tuned. Have a great night. Bye.